resonance in two branch parallel circuit we will first derive the expression so that you can understand how we are going to compute the resonance if we are going to vary the capacitor and the inductor okay so let me to revise derive the expression once again and obtain the expression for the total admittance that is present in the circuit okay so we had considered the parallel circuit with two branch wherein we applied the voltage v and the current was represented as i the resistance across the first branch was represented as rl and the second branch was represented as rc then we represented the corresponding impedances for the inductor it was plus j xl and for the capacitor it was minus j xc so for each of these branches we have two branches right so for each of these branch that is the branch which consists of the inductor and the branch which consists of the capacitor we computed what is the impedance so if you look at the impedance of the coil branch this was computed as zl to be equal to rl plus j xl and the impedance of the capacitor branch was represented as zc to be equal to rc minus j xc so these were the two equations for the impedance for each of these branches individually then what we did was we try to represent the branches each of these branches in terms of the admittance so if you remember we computed the admittance yl after rationalizing it to be equal to rl minus j xc divided by rl square plus xl square similarly we computed the admittance yc to be equal to rc plus j xc divided by rc square plus xc square so these were individual admittances for the coil branch and for the capacitor branch and the total admittances that we have was equal to yt to be equal to yl plus yc so this is equal to rl minus j xl divided by rl square plus xl square plus rc plus j xc divided by rc square plus xc square once the total admittance was computed what we did was we segregated the real term and the imaginary term so segregating we had the equation for total admittance to be equal to rl divided by rl square plus xl square plus rc divided by rc square plus xc square plus j into xc divided by rc square plus xc square minus xl divided by rl square plus xl square so this is the imaginary part and this is the real part so at resonance what we said was this imaginary part of the equation is equal to 0 and we obtain the total admittance to be equal to only the real part so from this we obtained the resonant frequency for this particular circuit and we computed the 
impedance of this two branch parallel circuit to be equal to purely resistive by considering only the real part of this particular equation now let us see using this equation how we can obtain resonance by varying the circuit elements so if you can see in this particular equation you have xc and you have xl so if you look at the circuit you can clearly observe that other than the resistance the circuit element is inductor and you have a capacitor so we will first see how we can obtain the resonance by varying the inductor in the circuit now if we are going to vary the inductor or if we are varying the circuit elements in general what we need to do is to attain a resonance we have to keep the frequency constant so you need to keep the frequency constant so in this case if this has to be achieved you need to ensure that the applied voltage and the current need to be constant because most of the equations that we write are in terms of admittance which is y is equal to i by v right so we need to ensure that the current and the voltage are in phase moreover because we write the equation in terms of the current that is flowing in the circuit we need to keep the frequency constant as well as the current constant now to see how we can vary the value of the inductor basically what we want to compute in this particular derivation is we want to compute the value of the inductor so that we can achieve the resonance okay so we are going to consider the imaginary part of this particular equation yt so you can consider the imaginary part of the equation that you have let me name this as equation number 3 okay consider the imaginary part of the equation 3 and i have this as xl divided by rl square plus xl square to be equal to xc divided by rc square plus xc square why it is equal to because we have seen in the last class at resonance this entire imaginary part of the equation will be equated to zero so i can clearly equate xl divided by rl square plus xl square to be equal to xc divided by rc square plus xc square now to simplify this equation because i want to compute the value of the inductor right so to represent it in a easier manner let me represent this part of the equation to be equal to zc that is in terms of the impedance okay so since you have zc square to be equal to rc square plus xc square i can rewrite this equation as xl divided by rl square plus xl square to be equal to xc divided by zc square now let us cross multiply these parameters so you get this as xl into zc square to be equal to xc into rl square plus xl square let me represent this in the form of a quadratic equation that is because i want to compute the value of the inductor so i can rearrange this and write this as xl square xc minus zc square xl plus xc rl square to be equal to 0 so this equation now represents the form ax square plus bx plus c to be equal to 
and generally to compute the value of this particular quadratic equation we compute it as x to be equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a so in this case the value of a is equal to xc b is equal to minus zc square and c is equal to rl square into xc okay that's because we want to compute the value of l right so we need to consider this term xl to be the term corresponding to x okay so using this quadratic equation and the simplification of that we can obtain the result xl to be equal to minus of this particular term is equal to plus zc square plus or minus square root of zc square minus 4 xc square that is because you have xc here xc here so 4 xc square into so this is zc to the power 4 minus 4 xc square this into this multiplied with rl square divided by 2 times a that is 2 xc okay now let me multiply this term here so this will be 2 xl into xc this will be equal to zc square plus or minus square root of zc to the power 4 minus 4 xc square into rl square okay what is this particular term xl xc if you see if i have to substitute in terms of omega xl is equal to omega l xc is equal to 1 by omega c so when i multiply xl and xc this will be equal to omega l divided by omega c this will be equal to l by c so i can write this as 2 times l by c to be equal to zc square plus or minus square root of zc to the power 4 minus 4 xc square rl square so i want basically the value of the inductor so rearrange this particular expression this will be l to be equal to c by 2 zc square plus or minus square root of zc to the power 4 minus 4 xc square into rl square so this is my final expression for the value of the inductor that is obtained by varying the circuit element and in this case it is the inductor now to attain resonance we have to consider different cases okay because we cannot consider this entire equation and say that resonance can be obtained so let us see what are those conditions so to attain resonance we need to satisfy certain conditions equation let me write it once again here so you have l equal to c by 2 zc square plus or minus square root of zc to the power 4 minus 4 xc square rl square now the conditions are based upon the parameter that is within the square root so based on this we can decide whether the value of the inductor will be only the magnitude or whether you will also get an imaginary part okay so let us consider the first case the first case is when zc to the power 4 is greater than 4 xc square into rl square now if you have the value of zc to the power 4 greater then you can see here you have square root of this particular term this value is greater than this 
then you will have two values for l correct two values of l for which the resonance will occur that is because you have zc square plus or minus this term so if zc to the power 4 is greater than this particular term you will have zc square plus a value and you have another value which will be zc square minus that value so there are two values for the inductor at which the resonance will occur second case we will see if zc to the power 4 is equal to 4 xc square into rl square in this particular case what happens is that this entire second part of the equation will be equal to 0 and in this case the value of the inductor L will be equal to C by 2 multiplied with Zc square. So you will have only one value for the inductor at which you can attain the resonance. Now let us look at the last case when Zc to the power 4 is less than 4 xc square into rl square. Now if you consider this value to be very very less then obviously you will get square root of minus this value. So square root of minus this value if it is less or if you get a term under the square root to be minus you will always get an imaginary term here that is the second half of this particular equation. So if you are considering the inductor having an imaginary part of the equation then it is not possible for us to attain resonance. So if the value of Zc to the power 4 is less than this particular term we cannot consider the value of the inductor in this case so none of the value of the inductor will achieve the resonance clear so the same thing or the similar concept has to be repeated when we are considering the resonance that will be obtained by varying the capacitor clear so let us start with that let me write the title resonance obtained by varying the capacitor so as i mentioned earlier either we have to keep the circuit elements constant and vary the frequency or we have to keep the frequency constant and vary the circuit elements and in this case we are going to vary the circuit element corresponding to the capacitor so what we need to do is to attain resonance we have to keep the current and frequency of the circuit constant so that you can vary the circuit element that is the capacitor. So with this in mind let me again consider the equation 3 that is the imaginary part of the equation 3 and begin. So considering the imaginary part of equation 3 I have it as xl divided by rl square plus xl square to be equal to xc divided by rc square plus xc square. Now my intention is to compute the value of the capacitor. So what I need to do is I need to represent this rl square plus zl square in terms of its impedance. So we can represent this as zl square to be equal to rl square plus xl square and hence we have the equation xl divided by zl square to be equal to xc divided by rc square plus xc square. Now let us cross multiply this. So this will be xl into rc square plus xc square which is equal to xc into zl square. To represent this in the form of a quadratic equation you should ensure that the term x is in terms of 
xc so let me rewrite this equation and i get xl xc square minus zl square xc plus xl into rc square is equal to 0 so this is xc square xl minus xl zl square plus xl into rc square is equal to 0 i've just repeated here in the next slide okay so it's the same thing that you have here what is a and what is b a is xl b is minus zl square and c is equal to xl into rc square so solving this quadratic equation right for the term capacitor means you have to consider xc so xc will be equal to minus of b so it is plus b plus or minus square root of b square in this case it will be z l to the power 4 minus 4 into xl square into rc square divided by 2 times xl again what you need to do is cross multiply these two terms you will get this as 2xc xl equal to zl square plus or minus square root of zl to the power 4 minus 4 xl square into rc square again like i explained previously xc into xl is equal to l by c okay so this can be written as 2 l by c to be equal to zl square plus or minus square root of zl to the power 4 minus 4 xl square into rc square and i want the value of the capacitor so when i represent or cross multiply here so this will be 2 l divided by z l square plus or minus square root of z l to the power 4 minus 4 xl square into rc square so this is the final expression for the value of the capacitor so like the way we have considered the three different conditions dependent on the term that is within the square root here also we need to consider the three different conditions so let us consider that so to attain resonance the following conditions exist so the conditions are based on the value that is present within the square root so you have 2l zl square plus or minus square root of zl to the power 4 minus 4 xl square into rc square right so the first condition is if zl to the power 4 is greater than 4 xl square into rc square now if this value is greater obviously the term that is within the square root will be positive and because we have plus minus so what will happen is that you will get two values for the capacitor at which we will observe the resonance so the capacitor can have two values if zl to the power 4 is greater at which the circuit will resonate the second condition that we have is if zl to the power 4 is equal to 4 xl square into rc square in this case this entire term will be equal to 0 and the value of the capacitor can be computed as c to be equal to 2l divided by zl square okay because this entire term will be equal to 0 
the third condition that we have is if z del to the power 4 is less than 4 xl square into rc square in this case what will happen is that this term within the square root will be a negative value and here because this term is an imaginary so there will be no value of capacitor at which the circuit will resonate so from what we have seen that is the circuit element c and l always the term within the square root should be either a positive value or you should see to it that that term the square root term does not exist at all so that you get the values of the capacitor and the inductor such that the circuit will resonate now in the circuit that is the two branch parallel circuit if you observe we have seen what happens if we vary the inductor and what happens if we vary the capacitor now let us see how we can attain resonance by varying this rl and rc one minute okay so resonance obtained by varying rl or rc now from the two branch parallel circuit that we have seen we have seen that we can vary the inductor and we can vary the capacitor because we have resistance in series now let us check out what happens if you vary either of them either if you vary rl or you vary rc in this condition also one thing that needs to be kept in mind is that whenever you are varying the circuit element you have to keep the frequency constant so to attain resonance you have to ensure that current and frequency are kept constant again let us consider the imaginary part of the equation corresponding to the admittance that is this equation so let us consider only the imaginary part of this so considering the imaginary part of the equation we have xl divided by rl square plus xl square to be equal to xc divided by rc square plus xc square so if you are varying the value of resistance rl you are supposed to compute that value of rl if you are varying the value of rc you are supposed to compute the value of rc okay so let me first consider that i am computing the value of rl so the first thing that you need to do here is just cross multiply these parameters and compute the value of rl okay so let me cross multiply this this will be xl into rc square plus xc square equals xc into rl square plus xl square so i get this expression as xl rc square plus xl xc square to be equal to xc rl square plus xc into xl square right so now to compute rl that is the term that is present here that is rl square i can write this as rl square to be equal to xl rc square plus xl xc square minus xc xl square divided by xc exactly or to be precise if you want to compute the value of rl this is equal to square root of xl rc square plus xl 
xc square minus xc xl square divided by xc okay so in this case you are not having any value which will give you an imaginary term that is because you have the terms here in terms of rc square you have the terms in terms of xl and xc square right so obviously the value of this resistor will be a positive value okay so this is the equation to compute the value of rl similarly we can compute the value of rc just by rearranging this equation the equation that you have here let me name this as equation number star just by rearranging the term and considering or writing the expression for rc i can write this as rc to be equal to square root of xc rl square plus xl square xc minus xc square xl divided by xl clear so this is the way in which you can compute the value of rc just by considering this term in equation star in this case also the value of rc will be a positive value so you do not have to consider the three different conditions so this is how you can obtain the value of resin value of rl or rc by varying them keeping in mind that the resonance is obtained when the current and the frequency are kept constant let's quickly solve one numerical in the parallel circuit the value of r is equal to 8 kilo ohms l is equal to 0.2 milli henry and c equal to 8 microfarad you are asked to calculate omega r q and bandwidth sub question b you need to find omega 1 and omega 2 sub question c determine the value of the power dissipated at omega r omega 1 and omega 2 they have given the circuit as with the applied voltage 10 sin omega t the resistance r inductance l and the capacitance c basically omega r they have specified but it is equivalent to omega not that is a resonant frequency okay so omega r is the resonant frequency which is equal to 1 by root lc 25 zeros radians per second quality factor q is computed as either in terms of the inductor or in terms of capacitor you can consider any of them let me write it as r divided by omega r l 1600 is the value and there is no unit for this to compute the bandwidth bandwidth is computed as if you remember quality factor or selectivity is equal to resonant frequency divided by bandwidth i can rearrange this equation and write this as resonant frequency divided by quality factor 15.625 unit will be radians per second that's because here resonant frequency we have computed in radians so here it's radians per second so second part of the question b we are supposed to compute omega 1 and omega 2 so to compute omega 1 this is computed as minus b by 2 that is minus bandwidth by 2 plus omega r and omega 2 is equal to b by 2 plus omega r 24.9922 kilo radians per second okay 25.00 Zero kilo radians per second. Fine. So next we have to wait. 
next is we need to compute the power dissipated so power dissipated at resonance at omega r is equal to we are considering impedance to be equal to r right so what is the value of r here in this case r is equal to 8 kilo ohms okay so you have to compute first the value of your current that is flowing in the circuit at resonance okay so we can consider p is equal to v square by r or you can consider p to be equal to i square into r or you can consider p to be equal to v into i whenever you are considering the value of current ensure that you are considering the current at resonance okay it is not the total current it should be the current at resonance so if i am doing it in this way the current at resonance then i will consider the current i to be equal to ir that is equal to v by r and in this case what is the voltage i have to consider only the magnitude it is 10 so it is 10 divided by 8 k power dissipated at resonance okay so power dissipated at resonance p is equal to 0.0.0125 watts okay next we have to consider what is the power that is dissipated at at omega 1 and omega 2 here in this case remember they have asked us power dissipated at omega 1 and omega 2 those are half power frequencies right omega 1 and omega 2 are half power frequency so here in this case how do you compute if you remember the waveform frequency response curve omega 1 omega 2 this is vm this is vm by root 2 so power dissipated at omega 1 and omega 2 that is half power frequencies okay so p is equal to vm by root 2 the whole square multiplied with 1 by r so this is what vm is what the value that is given in the question vm is vm sin omega t right so vm is equal to 10 so power dissipated at this point will be equal to 10 divided by 2 multiplied with 1 divided by 8k 6.25 milli watts